and welcome to I Demand a Homestead. In today's episode, we're going to do our first I Demand a How-To session. Um, so today what we're going to teach you how to do is make lacto-fermented pickles. Um, or basically this is kind of the natural way of making pickles, where you actually don't have to pickle them in vinegar. All you need are just a few simple things and it's a fermentation process that actually generates the vinegar itself. So really, all you need are your pickles, or your cucumbers rather, which we have here. We just um, got these from our own vines um, just yesterday. Those are the first ones we've gotten in quite a few years. I haven't, I haven't managed to grow pickles. They just don't like the soil around here, but I think I finally, finally maybe got it sorted out. So, and then we also need some salt just sea salt. Um, you don't want um, the regular kind of table salt because that has um, some anti-caking things in it. It also has iodine and those particular chemicals can actually interfere with the fermentation. So you really want to make sure that you have a sea salt. Um, I have a fine sea salt. You can also use a coarse pickling salt. That's fine too. Um, the only difference is if you decide you want to use a fine salt like this one, you need to use half as much. So when I'm going to be making one liter size jars, I'm only going to need one tablespoon of this salt because it's fine. If you're using a coarse sea salt, you're going to need two tablespoons. All right. So we're going to start by um, washing our pickles or our cucumbers, sorry, and then we're going to get ready to do the rest. Okay, excellent. So now our cucumbers are washed um, and now we can kind of decide how we want them in our, our ferment. Now you can, if you want to, you can choose to pickle them whole or you can cut them into spears. Um, I normally cut them into spears just because some of them are like weird shaped, some of them are huge. And so you want them in a fairly consistent size so that that way they'll all ferment together at the same speed. So. What I'm going to do then is I'm just probably going to cut this one in half. Oh yes, and what I also like to do is I'm going to cut both ends off of these cucumbers. And the reason why is um, that seems to help them from getting soft and mushy when they're being fermented. And that is kind of one of the things we do want to make sure we talk about here today is how to keep your cucumbers crisp. Uh, they can stay nice and crisp and become nice crisp pickles because that's really what we're after. Okay. We are ready to uh, pack our jars. So what we want to think about with this is that we need um, a source of tannin uh, for our ferment which is what is going to help our cucumbers stay crisp as they ferment and turn into pickles. Um, so you have a few different options for this. Um, you can use kind of what I have here, which are grape leaves. Um, we have a few kind of grapes growing in our backyard, which if you've seen our previous video, which was the tour, you've seen our, our teeny tiny little vineyard. Um, and so I'm gonna use these for our source of tannin. Uh, if you happen to have wild grapes growing um, anywhere nearby that you can you can harvest safely and you know for sure that those are grape vines, uh, you can use those. Um, other option you can use, you can use bay leaves. They have a source of tannin as well. Or you can just take a regular tea bag and you can put it in the bottom of your jar. And that will also give you that tannin that's going to help your, your pickles stay crisp. All right, so for me, I'm just going to take one of these here grape vines and try and push it into the bottom. That's okay. Anyway, there we go. Um, we are using, we're going to make dill pickles. So I'm going to take one of these nice big dill sprigs and I'm going to put it down into the bottom as well. Okay. Um, then we are making garlic pickles. 
So I'm gonna put a couple of these garlic cloves in there as well. And these are just big cloves that I've cut in half from our, gar um, from our garden. We just, we just harvested our garlic just this past week. So this is super nice and fresh. And then I'm gonna start packing our jars. As you can see, it's pretty darn simple so far. Nothing magical. I think people kind of think that making ferments is like super difficult and you have to have some kind of special equipment to do it and you really don't. It's just a lot of air of mystery, which the other homesteaders don't want you to know about because then you're not gonna be able to do this stuff at home. Just kidding, that's not true. We'll teach anybody. Okay, so. I am just packing these down in here. I want them fairly snug in there. Okay, I'm gonna take a few of the shorter ones. You don't wanna pack your jar completely full. You need to leave some space at the top and we'll kinda of chat about why that is. Okay, this isn't going to be terribly pretty, but that's okay. Interested in how it tastes and how it looks. Okay, I'm gonna put a couple more in here. So I can get it to where it wants. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna do extreme close up. Extra points if anyone in the comments section tells me what that's from. All right, we're gonna put an extra little sprig of dill in here. All right, we're gonna put a couple more cloves of garlic because we really want these to be nice and garlicky. Okay, perfect. So now what we're, do, we're ready to um, put our salt in here. So again, as we kind of talked about, we want sea salt. Um, this is fine sea salt. So it doesn't have any iodine, no anti-caking in, yeah, agents in there, which is super important. Um, and we, for this one liter jar, we are going to use one tablespoon of sea salt. So then all we do is just pour it in, right? Again, super simple, nothing crazy difficult here. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill this up with water so that all the cucumbers are covered. That's important because we don't want any oxygen, um, we don't want any of the cucumbers in contact with oxygen because this is supposed to be what they call an anaerobic fermentation, so no oxygen. Um, now, I have, we're on a well here, so we don't have any chlorine in our water and that's important uh, because chlorine can actually inhibit the fermentation. So, um, you have a few options here. Again, you can use uh, bottled water if that's what you want to do. Um, you also can very simply just take a pitcher of water from your sink, your tap, and leave it out overnight. Um, just cover it with a cloth so you don't get dust or bugs or whatever in there. Um, and that will actually allow the chlorine gas to evaporate and then you're ready to go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to just come out of the screen for a second. And I'm just going to fill these up the water. There we go. Okay, not all the way to the top. Again, extreme close up. Okay, and now what we need to do is we need to put a weight on here, something to keep these cucumbers from floating to the surface because you can kind of see they want the ones at the top that are not super packed in, they want to do that already. Um, now, there's lots of kind of fancy things that you can buy out there to keep your cucumbers from floating to the surface. Um, you can buy little glass weights, you can buy other things. Um, some people will buy small little, the small little canning jars and use them. We're gonna do something even more simple, which is I have got some rocks over here on the stove, which I have washed obviously and then boiled. Um, and then we're just gonna pop a rock in here um, onto the top just to push those cucumbers down underneath the water. So let me just pick which one is my favorite one. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Let's make sure it fits because that would be a bit of a downer, wouldn't it? Oh no, it doesn't want to. Okay, abort. Let's use a different rock. Okay. We've got a winner here. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so 
up fresh sanitized boiled rock and there we go perfect <laughs> and again let me show you that okay so you can kind of see that everything is below the surface now what we're going to do is we just put a lid on here and we're going to put this on nice and loose and then we just get a ring so these are your standard candy bars nothing nothing again nothing fancy um and what's going to happen is over the course of a few days depending on how warm it is it's pretty warm here because we're in uh right at the end of the july uh beginning of august so it's pretty warm so probably within two or three days we're going to see some bubbles start forming on these jars and that's going to tell us that our fermentation has started which is good news um, once that starts to happen then what we need to do is every so often every day or so we just need to boop, open this up a little bit of gas will come out it's called burping your jar so that's what you need to do with these once a day um, so that that way the gas doesn't build up and you don't have your jars explode, which would be a super bummer, um, not what we want. So my advice is to put these somewhere where you're not gonna forget about them, okay? So I usually just keep them right on my counter. First thing in the morning, I get up, open the jars, then it's done. I don't have to worry about it until the next day. Um, so basically, within one to four weeks, um, depending on Again, how warm it is where they're fermenting and how sour you like your pickles. Um, these will be ready to eat. Um, and then at that point, what you're going to do is you're going to pop them in the fridge because that's going to slow down the fermentation. And then you just eat them as you want. So my suggestion is after you've seen the bubble start, maybe wait a week and then open your jar up and taste them and see if you like kind of how um, fermented they are. Obviously, once you've pulled one pickle out and you've tasted it, don't put it back in, you know, obviously. Um, and if it's not sour enough for you, then leave them out there for a little bit longer, okay? Um, and then bear in mind that over time, they will get a little bit more sour as they sit in the fridge, just so you have that in mind. Okay, so that is that. Um, the next thing we're gonna teach you how to do uh, in the next video is going to be how to make fermented beans. Um, and it's gonna be a different kind of, it's gonna be a sweet pickle actually. Oh, and one last thing before we finish up, which I forgot about. Um, and I'm gonna put a link to this book in the, uh, the description. Um, so this is a book called Wild Fermentation um, by a fellow named Sandor Katz. He's like the guru of wild fermentation. Um, so if you're looking to learn more about how to make more um, of these fermented pickles, or if you wanna make sauerkraut or kimchi or anything like that, um, even he talks about sourdough, lots of other crazy awesome stuff. Um, this is a super good book to get you started. All right, and again, I'll put a link down there. All right. Well, thank you very much for hanging out with me for our first I Demand a How To session. Um, and please, if you liked our video and you want to see more, click the subscribe button. And if you want to, you can also click the little bell there that will notify you whenever I post a new video. All right, and have a lovely day.